I see you at the top. Good morning, and you join me in Coventry, an old city here in the heart of England. And today I'm going to meet up with some fellow YouTubers, fellow creators whose channels I enjoy watching. I'd enjoyable meet up last year in Shrewsbury. So I'm hoping to have an equally enjoyable day today here in Coventry. But before I meet them, I've got time to look at the old medieval walls uh, here in Coventry. And it's not much that remains, but what does remain is really rather interesting. This is the Cook Street Gate, built around 1385. And it's uh, absolutely wonderful. So you're looking at the, uh, the stonework, it really is uh, quite beautiful. Huge, great uh, reddish stones. Really is, really is lovely. And there's a little uh, little plaque as well. Yeah, completed around 1385. It's part of the medieval town wall, which was demolished in 1662 by the order of King Charles II. But on the right-hand side, next to the gatehouse, used to stand an old pub. It was called the Old Tower Inn. And it was built sometime in the 16th century. Uh, it stopped being a pub in 1915 and was eventually pulled down in 1963. And in its place here now are the, uh, the Lady Herbert Gardens. So let's take a little walk in there. Before I uh, walk through the gardens and look at the other section of wall, I just want to take a look at the other side of the gatehouse here and what remains of the, uh, the old wall that was demolished. You can see actually it's quite, it was quite thick. Looking at it, it's about seven or eight feet thick. And there was a, a door at the top of the gatehouse, obviously allowed um, the garrison to protect the town, to actually walk along the walls from one gatehouse to another. There were originally 12 around the, uh, the city, but as I say, only two uh, remain. And these lovely cottages here as well. These are the uh, Lady Herbert cottages, and they date from uh, 1935. Really rather interesting. Not quite sure who Lady Herbert was. Um, perhaps I'll have to do some research. If I find you more information, I'll, I'll put that on the screen. But you can see behind me the section of, uh, of wall that was demolished. Must have been quite, uh, quite impressive in its, in its day. It's just a shame that so much destruction was done following the uh, English Civil War and, and the uh, restoration around sort of 1660. So many city walls, town walls were pulled down, so many fortifications destroyed, castles slighted, all on the orders of, uh, of the King. Well, Sir Thomas Fairfax, he gave the order to destroy no end of castles and city walls covered him in other videos around Colchester and Nunny Castle and uh, the more I look into his exploits and the destruction that he did the more I dislike the man but there we go that's history I suppose but let's walk down a little further and take a look at what remains of the city wall through yesterday when I arrived in Coventry. It was a lot more busier then. Lots of people uh, drinking premium strength lager. Yeah, quite. I guess that's uh, part of modern society. But these walls are really rather interesting. Back in 1642, the Royalist forces of King Charles I laid siege to Coventry. Charles I came here with 800 cavalry and around 300 foot soldiers. They opened up on the old, old walls with cannons and breached them. Now, there's still this section of wall that remains and it's uh, quite an interesting section of wall because you can actually still see evidence of the siege in the brickwork, in the stonework. There's still some um, 
impact marks on the uh, on the stones which is quite interesting to see so many old city walls town walls and other historic gatehouses still have scars of battle on them from the English Civil War after the uh, restoration in 1662 when King Charles II was uh, on the throne uh, he gave orders that these these uh, walls were to be pulled down one wonderful act of destruction if only that order hadn't been given Coventry might have been a little different today but I've had more more city wall but there again given the activities during the Second World War that may not be the case well, I'll talk about that a little later in the video when we go up to the ruins of Coventry Cathedral by 1748 there were still 12 entrance gates in situ in the city of Coventry but by uh, 1849 only two actually remained There's quite a few uh, information plaques which uh, tell visitors about the city walls, the siege and uh, other aspects of the history of uh, Coventry. Gatehouse behind me, one of the later ones built dating from around 1440 and it's restored a few years ago. And it's really rather interesting to see with the impressive stonework and the door on the side. It's really rather nice to look at. And just through here Go through this little archway. And this is the uh, the lower part of the uh, the Lady Herbert Gardens. And it really is lovely here. You can see the uh, other side of the, uh, the gatehouse and the walls. And they've done it done a nice little job here on the gardens. It's really pleasant. The only I saw is the footbridge behind me. It's seen better days like most of Coventry city centre, it's a little run down. Given the history of Coventry, it's not quite what I've expected. But there again, a lot of damage was done to Coventry during the Second World War, as we'll discover as we head up to the ruins of Coventry Cathedral. But I'll leave you with a, a few photos of the, uh, the walls and the gardens and the area of uh, Coventry that's around here, the city centre. And I'll go meet my friends and we'll have a fun day here exploring Coventry. Had a great morning just walking around looking at some of the the architecture and the gardens <laughs> and I've made my way down to the transport museum here in Coventry one of the uh, real tourist attractions here and I've met my friends as well so here's Paul hello from West Country Wanderings of course we we wandered around Shrewsbury last year and had a really we fun did. day out with other creators as well it's good to yep. see you again and you and you Alice I've yes we're watching yes. your travels uh, around the West Country, looking at rivers, canals, and uh, and railway stations and ra railway lines. Yep, that's and, right. And uh, local history as well. So I'm in the foreign territory, an urban environment, a rare urban environment for West Country wandering. Oh, absolutely, one. yeah. Because <laughs> normally Paul, Paul videos in, in in rural locations where it's nice and quiet. We don't have the luxury of a, a quiet location here. <laughs> no. We've got. Uh, busy city centre to contend with today and all the challenges that brings. But it is quite spacious, the bits I've walked because I came in on the train. Yeah. 
lots yeah. of open spaces here so you don't feel like you're hemmed in or too crowded. No, I, I, I had a walk around yesterday afternoon when I arrived in, um, in Coventry and it was very, very busy. And uh, every time I tried to film something, I ended up filming a bus. Which, yes. uh, which is normally the case in a, in a, in a town centre situation and uh, take 16 I actually deliver what I came here to deliver and that little section to camera so uh, lots of bus shots that uh, on the cutting room floor <laughs> but it's nice to see you again Paul and, and uh, we'll have a great day today wandering around thank you Thanks. and I'm also here with Howard as well from the channel Hi. travel happy with Howard and it's lovely to see you again yes, Howard I've not seen you since uh... Nuremberg Since airport. Nuremberg, Nuremberg Airport. Yeah. We were waiting for our delayed Ryanair flight. That's right. And we were tracking the aircraft on uh, on a flight radar <laughs> app. Yes, yes. And uh, it was. what was it? Two hours late, wasn't it? Two hours I mean, late, yeah. Two hours late. And getting, we didn't get any compensation. And no compensation <laughs> as well. That's the pitfalls if you fly budget airlines uh, late at night. They're usually delayed because of their schedule. And it wasn't the first delayed flight that I've had in the last nine months. So uh, it's lovely to see you again, Howard. Yes. We yes. met up a few minutes ago and we shared a coffee and had a good old chin wag and uh, relived that moment at Nuremberg Airport. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have a great day today walking around um, Coventry, looking at some of the history and no doubt we'll be chatting to Paul and Howard again during the travels. But what I want to check out first is the statue ahead of me to a very famous man and that's Frank Whittle, the inventor of the jet engine. And just opposite the museum is the statue to Frank Whittle. And he was an English engineer, an inventor, and Royal Air Force uh, Air Officer. And he's credited with the design of the jet engine, the modern jet engine. Absolutely brilliant man. And his statue is of course here in Coventry because he was born in Coventry on the 1st of June 1907 at number 72 Newcombe Road in the Earlsdon area of the city. And he died on the 8th of August 1996 in Columba, Maryland in the United States of America. And all those holidays that I've had jetting off around the world, powered aircraft powered by jet engines, I owe my thanks to Frank Whittle. So it's lovely to come to Coventry and to see his statue. But let's move on further up towards the Priory and the ruined cathedral. found something interesting on the pavement. So I look forward to watching their videos and seeing what it is they discovered. But I'm walking through here now into the ruins of the old priory. This is uh, St Mary's Priory, founded by Leofric, Earl of Mercia, and his wife, Lady Cadaver. It was built on the former site of a nunnery, which was destroyed in 1016 by the Danish king, or the army of the Danish king, King Canute. One of the many towns that uh, he tried to take control of here in England. But Lady Godiva herself is actually quite interesting. And she was a late Anglo-Saxon noblewoman and relatively well documented as being the wife of Leofric, Earl of Mercia. And she died in the year 1067. And their indications are that she's actually buried here along with her husband, somewhere in the uh, Priory grounds. It's quite interesting. There's a lovely statue of her in the, uh, the Market Square. It's unveiled in 1949 and the, uh, the sculpture was Sir William Reed Dick. And I think uh, Lady Godiva and Coventry have gone hand in hand over the years. Very famous uh, resident. And of course she's famous for riding naked on a white horse through the streets of Coventry. And this was to gain remission against the oppressive taxation that her husband had uh, enforced on, uh, on her tenants 
here in the city. It's also where we get the name Peeping Tom from as well, because, because according to the story, a man named Tom watched her ride naked through the, uh, through the streets and was struck blind on seeing her, her, her on, the horse, on the horseback. And it's from there we get the name Peeping Tom. It's really rather nice here, just having a wander around, seeing the, Rome, the, the ruins of the, uh, of the Priory here, and, uh, and the Blue Coat School. I think it's the Blue Coat School just behind. Quite a nice, uh, quite a nice building. And behind me is uh, Paul and Howard, deep in, uh, deep in conversation. Uh, that's nice. <laughs> Let's go and uh, see what they're up to. There we go. We're all having fun. We are. We've we just are been talking guests. about YouTube and you, different ways of doing things and what we've been filming and what we've Talking enjoyed. about YouTube. What a surprise. I'd never, <laughs> I would never have guessed you would talk about YouTube in a million years. I thought it might be your love of railways and canals. <laughs> How foolish am I to think YouTube? <laughs> But it's nice walking around here. It is. It's, it's a nice open it's space. It's nice, nice and quiet as well. Nice and quiet. Yeah. Well, I saw you yeah. filming earlier on the uh, on the pavement. Oh, what yes. did you discover? Um, oh, it was all to do with the, the plaques in the pavement of all the people, the celebrities and famous people, and inventors, mm. creators that have all come from this fabulous city here in the West Midlands. There's famous people so, associated so with Coventry, yes. other than Lady Godiva. There yes. we go. I think she was <laughs> one of the plaques, wasn't she? She was, yes, indeed. Yeah, yes. she was, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the mm. oldest one on there, the one going back furthest in time. But uh, Yeah, she died first. in the year 1067. Mm. And she's supposed to be buried here. Somewhere around. Somewhere, somewhere here around. with her husband, yeah. <laughs> Leo Frick. Not sure yes. where. There is a blue plaque I can see on the wall somewhere. Just behind oh, on, the, on the wall, um, just behind you. So I'll try and read that and see what that says, but it's a little inaccessible and faded. But uh, mm -hmm. if I can photograph it, I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it. But yeah, mm. it's, uh, it's very pleasant here actually in the grounds. It's very quiet here compared to the city centre. Yes. yes, very much so. Very much so. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we're head on now up towards the uh, cathedral. That sounds good. Yes. Fun. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go, go and do that. Let's go, let's let's go, go find let's the go cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely lovely walking around the, uh, the church. Dates from 1113. Fire gutted the church in 1257 and they uh, rebuilt it back in the 14th century. And the spire, well, that was rebuilt in 1667. Absolutely magnificent church. And given the history of uh, Co Co uh, Coventry, especially during the uh, uh, Second World War really is amazing that it uh, has survived. There's a couple of notable people who have been associated with the church over the years. Sarah Siddons, well she was an actress in the 18th century and she was married in the church in 1773. And Mary Ann Evans, well she was a novelist and uh, she attended the church for many years between 1840 and 1849. And there's a plaque to her in the church. And she's better known as the novelist, George Eliot. But it's beautiful looking at the outside of the building. And it's still in remarkably good condition, given the history of uh, Coventry. But this is uh, another historic part of, uh, of the city. But this is Cuckoo Lane. And just, uh, just behind me is the old county goal. It's now the Slug and Lettuce pub, and it was designed by uh, Samuel Eglinton, 
and it opened in 1783. It's also the location of the last public hanging here in Coventry. Mary Bell was hung outside on the 9th of August 1849 when she was aged just 31 before of a crowd of about 20,000 people. The bells of St Michael's Church tolled at 10am 10, 10 when Mary fell to the bottom of the rope. She was born Mary Wright on the 28th of June 1888, 1818 I should say, in Nuneaton. She murdered her husband Thomas Bell with arsenic. They'd been married since 1838 and their relationship was fairly turbulent. She had uh, six children but only one survived and they lived in poverty. And as I say, she was the last person publicly hanged in Coventry. But I'm going to find out what's happened to the other two. Oh, they're just over here. So it's going to just a little walk down here and see what they are uh, they're discussing. Not the moment, but, um, yes, we're brought talking my, about... Brought my camera again. <laughs> <laughs> we're still talking about YouTube with different uh, techniques. We also... What a been, surprise. We've got a piece of camera about the, uh, the church what it looks like inside yeah. the Holy Trinity Church with that amazing... It's beautiful, scenic. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and the painting yeah. as well, and the stained glass as well. The stained glass was excellent. Yeah, and of course you saw the um, stone tablet to uh, George Eliot. George Eliot, yes. Mm -hmm. I, yes. Just, I didn't know that was there. I knew that she had connections to Coventry, yeah, yeah. but I didn't realise. I know, so she was a regular attender for about mm -hmm. four or five years uh, at this yeah. particular church. 1840 to 1849, according to the plan. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely wonderful to see that. Factual Alice, there we go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's, he's, like, we've had a good day so far. It's been really good. Yeah. Very yeah, nice and good. chilled and relaxed. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been so, really uh, good fun. We're heading over that way now, aren't we? Over I think there's to go to the cathedral. Just... Yeah, to have a look yeah. there. The old one first, and then yeah. uh, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll go have a head down there. Yes, yeah, we can find that old pub as well. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. yes. Okay, that sounds good fun. Yeah, let's go yes. find that. <laughs> <laughs> Side of the uh, county goal, or the slug and lettuce as it is now. It's actually my, uh, my hotel accommodation from last night. Quite a, quite a nice building inside, and the rooms are really rather nice as well. But I spotted this uh, old Victorian postal box, dates from 1880, and was manufactured by W&T Allen and Company of London. Very rare to see a post box like this. Absolutely wonderful. And the first wall post boxes were introduced in 1857. And the first one was installed in Shrewsbury. So that links this video to my previous uh, video in Shrewsbury, a postal box. Absolutely delightful. And of course, around the corner is the, uh, the Golden Cross. Absolutely beautiful pub, which dates from 1661. Absolutely beautiful to see that that uh, has survived. But what I've come to see here in Coventry is the ruins of the cathedral. So let's go inside and take a little look. cathedral was uh, constructed in the 13th 14th centuries and had a really interesting history which all came to an end on the evening of the 14th of November 1940. 
That's when the Luftwaffe bombed Coventry. I think it was a reprisal attack for our attack on Dresden. It was an event that changed not just the history of the cathedral, but the history of Coventry forevermore. But we're reminded just how terrible wars are. And even as I record this, we still have the, uh, the war in Ukraine, which we just hope and pray is coming to an end. But they have a tower here and it's open. And I like climbing church towers. So let's go and climb the tower and look at the views over the city of Coventry. So here we go, climbing another church tower. Everywhere I go, I tend to climb church towers. And I climb quite a few, including Ulm Minster which has the tallest tower of any church in the world. That was really exciting to, uh, to go up. Mm, the, uh, the tallest in England, of course, is Salisbury Cathedral. But it's only the 21st tallest uh, in the world. And uh, this is the third tallest in England after Salisbury and Norwich. It stands at 294 feet. The tower is actually completed in 1394. Now the spire was completed some years later in 1433. And there are 180 steps all the way to the top. So I'm going to concentrate on climbing them. And I'll see you at the top. top of Coventry Cathedral. We've had an absolutely fantastic day walking around, looking at the history of uh, Coventry and uh, enjoying each other's company as well. It really is, really was a, a brilliant day out. And the views from the top here are absolutely brilliant. Uh, the tower is open on Fridays and Saturdays, I think from 11 until three. But uh, like all good days, they have to come to an end. And it's been great to catch up with Paul and to see Howard again. So please check out their channels, West Country Wanderings for Paul and uh, Travel Happy with Howard. I'll leave the links in the description below. So please give them a follow. And of course, you've got three different videos to watch from our day out here in Coventry because they've covered things in the video which I haven't covered as well. So um, at all. So uh, looking forward to seeing the videos that they produce. I'm sure we'll meet up again and have another great day out somewhere else. So it's time to say goodbye and thank you so much for watching. So it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Paul. Bye. And goodbye from Howard. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>